Okay, so today we're going to be going through my bullish thesis on the Boston Beer Company, ticker symbol SAM. Yesterday, September 3rd on a Friday, in my new Fidelity account, I purchased three shares at an average cost of $556 a share, as we can see here. So this is just my starting position because if we take a look at the stock chart, we can see that over the past year, this, this stock has, now over the past year, over the past six months, this stock has been on a severe downfall from its highs of $1,300 a share down to $555 a share. So the stock is down over 50%. However, if you look at where it was before the, the pandemic, it was trading at near the $300 to $400 range. And then it, 3x in price because of a lot of it came from the the their trulies we're going to look through their brands but their trulies that really helped the brand out in a helped the company out in a major way because there was so much hype around the hard seltzer industry so uh the next thing we're going to look at is how many hedge funds are holding it as of this quarter 437 hedge funds are holding this stock compared to last quarter around 400 were and two of my big things about this company is the things I'm really looking forward to is next year they are coming out with a hard Mountain Dew. So that means they are partnered with Pepsi. And this is supposed to debut in early 2022 with a black cherry and watermelon version of the drink. So excited for that. That should help out, help them out in a major way. Next up we have in Canada, they are partnering with multiple companies to launch a cannabis drink and that also has huge potential too so two huge innovative products coming to the market next year and if we look at their some of these brands they bought out some of them the original one is sam adams that's their big one but then they also have dogfish head they have truly hard seltzers they have twisted tea and they have angry orchard hard ciders as well as coney islands and they have multiple breweries throughout the united states but the big drivers for this company the past year or two has been their hard iced tea, twisted tea, and their truly hard seltzers. That's what's been hot the last couple of years. So if we look at the valuation of this company, it, it currently trades at a PE ratio of about 29. And that is, that's not that bad for how much this company should grow. I just feel like the stock has come down so much to the point where it's kind of, it's overdone now that it's, it's oversold and from 1300 to 500 is a huge drop, but I, I can't, I can see it falling more maybe to a 500, maybe a $450 range. And if it goes below 500, that's when I'm going to buy more shares. And so I'm fine. If, if it drops to 500 or 450, that's totally, I'm totally okay with that. I, I'll just buy more shares and my cost basis will be lower, but I would not, I also would not be surprised if this shoots up to six or 700 within the next six months. So either way, I'm in a good position. Now we can see for EPS last year, they did a little over $15. This year, they're estimated to do $20. And then the following year, they're expected to do $26. So this is a very fast growing company. Revenue is expected to grow 31%. And next year, it's expected to grow over 19%. So great numbers there. Um, this company is widely held by institutions. So if we look here, we can see that BlackRock, um, T. Rowe, Vanguard, companies like that, JP Morgan Chase, Renaissance, these big firms hold 97% of this company while insiders only own 8%. And if you, you can go back and check, the insiders sold a lot of their shares when it was near its high of around 11 or 1200. And that makes sense because the stock was so overvalued. And then I think a couple of them started buying back in, in, in July or so. And so that, that's why I feel pretty comfortable with this. Um, you could see BlackRock owns $1.3 billion worth of this company. And that's, it only has a market cap of 6.9 billion. So it's not that big of a company. And if you compare it to its competitors, like uh, let's say Heineken or something, some of these other beer companies are so much larger. They have 50 or $60 billion market caps. Like Heineken has a $52 billion market cap. So this company can easily 5X, in my opinion, especially if they keep acquiring other brands at the pace they've been. 
Um, the one year target estimate for this is 900, which doesn't mean too much because analysts are not always right, but it's still something to consider. And the, the, the most important thing to look out here for is their revenue and EPS growth. So 2017, they did $863 million of revenue. And this year, or 2020, they did 1.7 billion. And as you can see, revenue has grown very steadily in an upward trajectory. And then EPS also is looking good. It's gone from 99 million to 191 million. And then when I ran the numbers on this for what they're expected to do in EPS for this year, as well as next year, they're, they're estimating that $204 million of net income will be on the bottom line for this year. And that's up from last year, 191 million. Last year, 191 million. This year is 204 million expected. Then in 2022, they're expected to do $265 million on the bottom line. And so those are fantastic numbers there. Um, the other thing I did was I average, I took the average price for each year over the past couple of years and compared it to their net income for that year. And so like, if we look at 2019, we can see they did 110 million of net income and the average price that year was $350. Now in 2020, they did 191 million of, e of income and the average price was 675. Now for this year, they're expected to do over $200 million of net income. And so that's why I, could, I can see it hitting $900 a share by the end of 2022. So, and then in 2022, they're expected to do 265 million on the bottom line. And that would put them at a price of $1,200 a share. So I just really feel like the risk to reward profile here is very attractive. And that's why I started off with a small position. And then if it goes down more, if it goes to 450 or 470 or something like that, then I'll buy more. But I don't really see it going any lower than four. I, I, 450 is the lowest I could see it getting really. But yeah, those are all my reasons for why I bought this stock. Thank you for watching.